Victory Road Everybody has a story to tell How you got to heaven When you came from hell Victory Road Where miracles unfold On Victory Road Won't you come with me to Victory Down Victory Road Victory Road Victory Road Victory Road Hi, I'm Lee Benton, your host, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Victory Road, where you'll see the finest celebrities and various people of interest telling their victory stories to spread the word across the world, to give people hope, to encourage you. If you've gotten off your path of victory and you're trying to find your way, Isaiah 35, verse 8 through 10 talks about a highway of holiness where only the holy can walk on it, where God, there is a time when you reach out to God, He will put you back on your victory road. And that's what this show is all about. And today we have such an incredible, exciting guest. He is an actor, producer, model, among a few other things. And um, his story is very exciting and what he went through and how God has redirected him back and put him on his victory road. So please help me welcome Mr. Thomas Gunter. Welcome, Thomas. Uh, thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. Now, you were born in Arizona. Yes, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. And yes. you have, uh, you're one of six siblings? Yes, I'm six. the middle, older middle, uh, older brother, older sister than me, younger, two younger brothers and a younger sister. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough. house full. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, and well, we'll get into your career, what you're doing now. We're going to, but we're, we're going to flash back to the back of your history. Um, so, what actually, so you were raised up until what age in Arizona? I was raised all the way up until 18 in Arizona. Okay. Um, in high school, I wanted to pursue medicine. But we didn't come from, from money, so I joined the Navy my junior year in high school, and I was going to use the GI Bill to go to college. Oh, okay. And so I get out of high school. I end up in San Diego on an aircraft carrier. Of all places, the weapons department. So um, that's how you ended up in San Diego? Yes. Okay. I was trying to figure out what brought you to San Diego. So it was being in, in what? The Navy, did yes, you say? Yes, I was in the, um, the Navy on the aircraft carrier on Kitty Hawk. Oh, okay. Yes, it was, it was it was a great time, a great experience. It showed me um, a lot of the world and really sparked an interest in traveling and seeing all that the world had to offer. And how long were you there? I was for four years. Four in years the, in the yes. Navy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now how did you get in, uh, uh, in electric, in power company? Uh, how did that come uh -huh. about? When well, you left the Navy? Yes. After, after I got out of the Navy in San Diego, I needed work, and my father always instilled into us that you have to have a good, solid job, you know, to provide for your family. Yes. And so I got a job with the utility. I started working as a laborer and worked my way up into an apprenticeship program as a journeyman lineman. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I, I work on the, um, the transmission power lines, um, keeping the lights on when everything's so you're in the power business. You were in the power business. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, when the lights go out, the storms hit. We're the ones that go out and put the lights back on. Perfect. Okay. Now, okay. Um, and for all of you ladies out there, just FYI, Mr. Thomas Gunter is married. And when did you meet your lovely wife? During um, that time, while you were in the Navy, or after? After I was after the Navy. Okay. Yes, I met her um, when I was young and still used to go out to the nightclubs and everything. And um, I met her, and we ended up sitting at a table almost the whole entire night, just talking and laughing. That's a good sign. We danced one song, and that was only because the club was closing, and we're like, you know, we came to dance. We haven't danced, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. You knew. Yes. You knew that you two were soulmates. Yeah, and it, it was it was a beautiful thing, because I mean, you, you always think and hear about, oh, you know, you, you find it when you're not looking, and that's really true. That's right. It's like when you're really looking for something, it will present itself when it's ready. That's right. It's all God's timing. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, so now, so you met her during the time where you were working for the uh, power Yes, companies. for the power company. Okay. Yes, I was working there for her. And she was always a little bit nervous because we work long hours. Um, there were times that we go out to work for days um, when there's power outages, um, different various storms. And so we'd go out, fires um, in San Diego um, would take and destroy a lot. And I'd go to work for a few days at a time. And so she was, she was worried. And she knows in the back of her mind that there's always the potential of something wrong happening. Mm. So mm. she's kind of like a little earth angel, your little radar. Yes. Um, and she is a photographer, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because yes. Thomas also does these fabulous covers of these romance novels, which you'll be seeing on the screen. <laughs> um, and uh, I first met Thomas uh, at a screening, my agent took me to a, a private screening of a film he was starring in called Bullfighters, yes. correct? Uh -huh. And I thought, this man has it all. Not only is he good looking, he's in great shape, but he can really truly act. And I had no idea that you were doing all these covers of romance novels that, uh, like I said, he can do it all. So I really feel that God has blessed you in your career. Thank and you. and uh, so you're now producing as well. I just kind of I'm jumping back and forth. Yeah, so you're producing and you're in the middle of producing uh, uh, another film right now. Yes, I'm um, I'm working on producing um, two films that are are in pre-production right now. Okay. Um, we're still working on funding, and that's going to play a lot of of how big the production can get. Okay. Um, but it's really nice. One is called Church, and it's about the fight of good and evil. Okay. And the, the battle between um, the heavens and earth and where's the drawing point where it's like, you know what, enough is enough. There's more than just us. There's more than just humans. Right. And, and now you were talking about another film that that you're currently doing or you just finished called The Wolf? Or yeah, The Wolf is another one. Um, we're still writing it and it's about a character that he's who's come from a broken home okay. and he's looking for love. and. He thinks that he's, he's going to find love with a woman that's um, wheelchair bound. Okay. And he thinks that he's going to find the, that she's going to need him for love because she's lacking um, physical attributes. And Are you playing that character? Yes. Oh, you're playing yes. him. Okay. Yes, I'm going to be playing him. How cool is that? Yeah, well, That'll be a good character be, for you. It's, it's, it's Different gonna be, than what it's you're going to be challenging. It's going to be very challenging because what he's going to learn is that it's it, that he's deceiving himself yeah. because someone's in a wheelchair or they they don't have all the physical capabilities as everyone else in the world they are by far handicapped you know they they just relate to things maybe a little bit different see things from a different angle right. than you do but they are more capable in so many ways than imaginable so it's going to be it's going to be, be a good a, story it's going to be great and that'll be a great role for you because i well you've played so many different characters which yes. um we're going to take a minute, a break, and show you a real short clip, um, very short clip of who Thomas Gunter is and what he does. And you'll agree that he's a really fine actor. And we'll be right back. Take a look. Just keep things serious. What do I want? I want my boy, but I can't take him now, can I? Do you know where we're going? Yeah, the town. Well, I know that, but do you know where it is? Yeah, it's this way, I guess. You guess? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Again. Get up or I'm going to leave you. But you left her? Look, we had no choice. He had guns and knives. Could have ran. Come on! All right, soldiers, gear up. And that includes you, full right. Don't press your luck, pal. Captain. You will address me as Captain. Well, you may want to watch your back, Captain. 
Actually, I'm here to watch yours. Are you threatening me? Sir, stand down. Load up! Do you see what I'm talking about? He's a great actor. He can do it all. So then you meet your wife. You're working for this power company. Uh -huh. And um, tell a little bit of your victory story. Tell us what happened that day. Okay, well, it was one of the times um, my wife, she wanted to go to, to her friends and we have a weekend getaway. Mm -hmm. But I chose to, to go to work instead. And um, we're working on a power line, me and my partner and we're grounding the transmission line. And in the process of grounding it, my partner skipped a step and I had a jumper in my hand and he put it on the line and the power went through me and just electrocuted me. It just brought me together. While you were on the, the telephone pole? Yes. I mean, not the, the telephone, the power, the power pole, pole. Yes. the electric tower. Well, I was, I was actually in a bucket, which I'm really thankful that I was, I was actually in one of the insulated buckets. Um, but the you power, were both in the bucket together? Yes, we were in both and we were closer than me and Yuli. Okay. And but he went on with the insulated stick, put it onto the line, and the jumper went to me, threw my body into the ground. And everything clinched up. My arms were contacted metal, and I have some scars on my arms. Everything in my body just crushed. The muscles just were crushing. And I remember trying to scream. And nothing was coming out of my mouth, nothing. And then I was like, I can't move my eyes. Mm. And then I'm like, I just took my last breath. And that realization that mm. the end is Got now. The you know, that's, that realization is something I'll never, ever forget that my life is over right now. So you were electrocuted right then and there. Yes. In that bucket. And that moment when I realized that, that's when it didn't hurt no more. That moment, it's, everything stopped hurting. I don't know why or how I'm back here, but that moment in time, I knew mm. everything was going to be fine. I knew that, that everything was going to be okay. This is while you were actually dead, actually. Your, your heart had stopped, what, three yes. times? Yeah, when they got me to the ground, everyone was panicked. The whole crew was in panic. and. There was a guy on, on the crew, it was his first day, he was, he was our operator, um, special equipment operator from a big machine we used to run. And for some reason or other, he didn't give up. He's, they pulled me out of the bucket, I wasn't breathing, no heartbeat. It's been a few minutes and he's like, you know what, I'm, we're gonna do CPR on me. And so he started doing chest compressions and the guy that was in the bucket with me, he took and freaked out and he's like, he's dead, just let him be. And so uh, your friend was not electrocuted, but you were. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So it, the power surge went through him to you. It, it, it bypassed him. Wow. It just went into me. Just went straight to you. Yeah, but through, the jumper, um, cap through, the, through the jumper cables that we're using to ground the line. And, and so you were electrocuted right then and there. Now, you were telling me, too, earlier, as you were just saying, that the... I didn't realize this, and I'm sure a lot of you are not aware of this, that when you're electrocuted, um, that your body goes into all kinds of contortions, and it actually threw 
your shoulder out, pulled, yes. ripped your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, and you said, um, yeah, didn't it do something to your mouth? Yeah, because when it, it went into my hand and it went all across my body and come out, and my whole upper body was just just contracted. Every muscle, every muscle in my body, my upper body just contracted. My jaws, my neck, my back, my chest, everything, it just crushed. You know, everything was just crushing me. It ripped my shoulder out of place. I've had about an eight teeth crushed. My neck is tweaked out of place. So and your jaw, you crushed your own teeth. Yes, my teeth, my own teeth were being crushed. And by the grace of God, I didn't have my neck broken. This is something that's common with electrocutions is your body will just crush itself. Like, oh my goodness, I it's, didn't even know that. I, I really did yeah. not even know that. I was not aware that that would happen. Yeah. I'm, that's a horrible way. That's a horrible way for anybody to die, yeah, to it's, pass. It's very, it's very painful, but I don't, I'm, I'm very lucky to be here. Yes, you are. You know, I'm very lucky to be able to Hold do that what thought. I'm doing. We're gonna stop, we're gonna take a break for one moment. Hold that thought. We're gonna take a quick break. And um, wow, we're gonna hear more from Thomas and how he came out of this as soon as we get back. We're gonna take a little listen to our fabulous Victory Road Band. Don't go away, you've gotta hear the fabulous ending to this victory story. Thank you. Holy Spirit come And Holy Spirit stay We need to feel your fire we need to see your gaze. Now, Holy Spirit, come. And Holy Spirit, stay. We need to feel your fire. We need to feel your gaze. So won't you come? And won't you come, breathe over me, and won't you come, breathe over me, and won't you come. Holy Spirit, stay. Need to feel your fire. We want to feel your peace. Thank you, our fabulous Victory Road Band. They're so amazing. Aren't they great? We get to hear this every month. They're so amazing. I'm so blessed to have them. So now, um, and that was Phil Jones, Cheryl Jones, and Anthony Salerno. So back to your story. Now we've got about a few minutes to finish this and I want them to hear. So you actually, all this transpired in the bucket. Yes. Your, your partner that you were with up there on the power pole was not affected, but you were. You got the brunt of the whole electrocution. Yes. You actually, lights went out, your heart stopped, you were gone. Mm -hmm. So how did, you, how did you get down? Did they just bring you down? So the bucket still functioned after that? Were yes. they able to propel, uh, bring you back down? Yes, they, they brought me back Repel down to the, to the ground. Um, and getting me out of the bucket, I was a little bit bigger than I am now. I was a, um, a good solid 230, 240. Wow. And so it took them a little bit of time to get me out of the ground. And once they got me there, uh, like I say, and, uh, Willie Rodriguez, he he just, whatever happened, came over him. He wasn't going to let me go. He was your partner in the bucket? No, he wasn't my partner. My, my partner, from all, all the training and everything, he knew that I, it's fight or flight, and the, the, be, the, the worst got a hold of him. And, and I think it just disbelief and everything, he, he kind of just got He probably scared. went into shock. He did. And, and Willie took and, he took and started doing CPR on me. He talked him into um, my partner getting the help out, and... They started doing CPR on me. Finally, I started to breathe a little bit. So they backed off and then I stopped breathing. They started doing it again. I started to get a little bit of heartbeat. So they stopped, then I went back. And finally, the third time is when it was my time to come back. It was my time to come back. So three times they resuscitated you. Now mm -hmm. this is before the ambulance, before the paramedics yes. ever got there? Yes, it was before wow. they got there. 
So yeah. kudos to, yeah. is it Willie you said? Yes. Willie um, Rodriguez? Yes. God yeah. bless him. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, he stuck with it and, and did what did what he had to do. You know, he was, he didn't know what was going on. His first day on the crew. It was his first day? Yes, his first day. And it's like, welcome to the, welcome to the line. Wow, crew. and he saves a life on his first yes. day. And that was amazing. And, and I owe him so I much. I believe God placed him there just for you. Yes. That day. Me too. It was God's perfect timing. It was, it really was. And, and you know, everybody that I have met that have actually died or passed and came back, I always say people never leave heaven without mm -hmm. God giving them a parting gift. Mm -hmm. It's like a host that gives their, their, their guests parting yeah. gifts. So God has given you, that's why you're so talented. I mean, I, knew, mm -hmm. I know you probably had a lot of talents before, but I believe that God, when he sent you back, gave you all this fabulous ability to act and produce and, mm -hmm. and much, much more. I really hear in my spirit that you haven't seen anything yet, what God is going to do with you and your career and the impact you're going to have on the world. Mm -hmm. This is just one vehicle, that, one way yeah. that you have. So out of all of that, so you ended up in the hospital. How long did it take for you to recuperate from all of this? Um, years. I was, in, I was only in the hospital for a few days, luckily. Um, but I had multiple surgeries, and I was out of work for a little over two years. Wow. And during that time, that's when I discovered acting. Um, during that time? Yes. It was because I was out of work. The doctors tell me, you're never going to go do line work again. And I put in so much effort into the apprenticeship to become a, a journeyman lineman, to travel the world, to to do this job, which was rewarding, you know, it's physical, it's hard, it's high risk, and it was enjoyable. But once I was out there and I'm down, and the doctor says, you're never gonna do this, and you, you can't do it, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do it again, so no matter what you say, I'm gonna do it, but what, what if there's something more than just this. What if there's something more? Wow. So and then that that sent you. It opened me up. It actually see. catapulted your career. Yes. Your, it opened up a new door for you for it, the acting. It really did because when you're at home by yourself alone, you have the TV in front of you. And there's so many movies that you can watch mm -hmm. that are great writers and great people put together mm -hmm. that influence you, that will take you out of your head, yes. away from that depression, yes. away from that black hole that you're sinking into, and will spark an interest of something inside that you're like, you know what, hey, you know what, maybe I should go do something. Maybe I should take this, or wow, you know what, I feel really You had a good lot now. of time to reflect yes. on your back, yes. recuperating. Yes, exactly. And, and then what year, so you started your acting career in 2009? Yes. Uh -huh. And so how did you get to LA? Can you give us a real quick how you got here from San Diego? Um, from San Diego. I still live in San Diego, so I do a lot of commuting back and forth. Oh, you still currently live in San Diego? Yes, so I do a lot of commuting oh, okay, back and forth. Oh, okay, because we're in Orange County. Oh, okay, very yeah, close. Yeah, very we're close. kind of sort of an hour um, away neighbors. Yeah, and so I do a lot of uh, So you're still in San Diego yes. and everything, okay. And I'm, I'm up here um, at least two, Me three too. times a week. I'm commuting a lot and here. Yes. But it's, it's worth the drive it to is live there. It is definitely worth the drive. It's, San it's Diego's beautiful. beautiful. Yes. Did I say beautiful. thank you for sharing your heart and sharing your story? Uh, thank you. Is there anything, one thing that you want to share with the whole entire world that, um, to give somebody else hope, to encourage someone else. Is there anything that you want to say, a word of encouragement at, that you've uh, learned through all of this? I would, the biggest thing I've learned through all this is You can look to, into the camera and tell The biggest them. thing I've learned from all this is to, to help your fellow neighbor. You know, whether it's opening a, a door or helping them pick up a grocery because that little bit of help might be the thing that helps them help somebody else, you know? And it's really about helping each other out yeah. and it's it's something that people in today's society they would rather pick up a phone and take a picture or a video rather than lending a hand to help someone up i think the world would be such a so you really got place. this message while you were out is yes. that you needed to help people more yes i really, really did I, I need to give more of a helping hand to people that would would like it 
or okay. not even like it because you know what you just help someone you don't ask them for help because you just help them because you can maybe that was your parting message that God whispered to you to tell people yeah it could be well thank you for sharing that it's an exciting, incredible story. And how can people see you or how can they contact you? You have a website, right? Yes. And we're going to have the website on the screen. Uh, but do you want to just tell us verbally what is your yeah. website? Um, website is www.thomasthorgunter.com. So it's www.thomasthorgunter.com. Yes. Okay. And then they can reach you on Facebook as well if yes. they want. Yes, and under the same, thomasthorgunter.com. So you can also, they can look you up also in some of your films. They can see yes, you on uh, YouTube or IMDb. You can yes. check him, search for Thomas Gunter, support him, all the films he does, all the work he does, and say a prayer for Thomas and keep him, uh, you know, in your thoughts because he's going to be making a big difference, and he already is in this world. That's why God brought you back three times, because you're a big guy. It took three times to, to bring <laughs> that big heart back. And so we just thank you so much, and we appreciate your words. And I always like to end the show with the RSVP prayer. Uh, this is the opportunity for everyone, if you're not sure, if your name is on God's guest list. He has a big guest book. And uh, he said a while back that, the kingdom of heaven is like an event on earth. You have to RSVP just like you do to a party here on earth. Any nice event, you must RSVP or your name's not written in the guest list and you just don't get in. There's no reserved seat. It's that simple. So please, if you're not sure if your name is in that guest book, let's touch and agree and pray that RSVP prayer right now. Would you join me? Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. In Jesus, name, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive all those who sin against me, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me so that I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book. And reserve me a seat as I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if you've said that prayer for the first time, I'd love to hear from you. You can see my info on the screen, leebenton.org. And um, we'd just like to have your support. Um, anything that all anything, any donations at all will help spread this across the world. Um, and you will see more information where to see this show. We're on right now currently on the Uplift channel, on DirecTV and on the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, which hsbn.tv. And I'd like to give a big shout out, a thank you to Marissa Kinson Collections. Marissa Kinson will, the jewelry is by Marissa. She's a fabulous designer. Her credits will be at the end as well. And just thank you for the styles and appreciate everything. And we love you and we pray that you find your way back to your victory road, just as Thomas has. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. God bless you.